Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Keith from Black Quarterback Series. Y'all already know what we, we're about to talk about. So I ain't even gonna waste some time. Let's get into it. Here this afternoon. Six and 11 a year ago. Led to the final they bring in the new regime. There weren't many people that thought the Bears had a chance today. There were fewer people that thought the Bears had a chance. Yo, like I said, this keeps some black quarterback series. Um, we just gonna jump. We just gonna jump right off the porch with it. So, Justin Fields versus Trey Lance. I'm gonna try my best not to say Young. If I say Young, I mean Lance. Trey Lance versus Justin Fields right out the gate. Um, so if you guys didn't know, my birthday was September 11th, so I got to go to my go to my grandfather's house, chill and watch ball. It was a great time. Shout out to my family. Um, so yeah, um, so Trey Lance, let's do Trey, Trey. Let's do the bad, then the good first. So Trey Lance, 13 for 28, 164 yards, an interception. He looked okay. Now, granted, it was a a monsoon. It feels like it was like a monsoon type thing going on in Chicago. Um, and my uncle was coming up here for my birthday. Uh, he was going through the rain, and I didn't even put two and two together that he would make his way to Chicago before the game started. So just rain, not sleep, but just rain, groggy. Just it was it was a tough game. I've played in some. I think I've said that. So told, told oh. that story. Trey Lance. Trey Lance was he was okay. Um, he got hot in the fourth quarter. He was making some good reads, but ultimately the game was meh. If I had uh, if I had to like categorize it, it was meh. A D, about a D plus. Cause he wasn't terrible, but it wasn't awful either. Uh I don't think that Trey Lance is gonna be benched. But if um I think you're gonna hear players talk more about um how they wish they had a more mature guy there. Somebody's talking to made a good point. Players are not looking to be a part of a rebuild or waiting for a guy to grow up. You know what I mean? Players are not waiting for that, you know? So, um, it's going to be interesting to see how they go forward. The 49ers got some questions to answer because you're not supposed to lose to a team like the Bears. And I, I would say it's meh. And um, like I said, so the weather was bad on both sides. It's not like the weather was terrible one side then really really good on one side both teams had to play in the terrible weather and so the first thing i wrote on my pet first thing i wrote on my notes when i was doing uh, when i was studying getting ready for the review was too much greatness by justin fields now his numbers are not going to say how great he played but judging the level of opponent and just what he had around him uh, 18, 8 for 17, 121 yards, two touchdowns and interception. And the way he galvanized the guys was like, we're about to go win this. And they also found a soft spot in the, I don't know, like I've said this before, I'm not really an X and O's guy, but I know what I see. Um, they found a soft spot in the zone and they just kept taking advantage of it. You look at every single one of their touchdowns was on that soft side, was on that soft side of the, of the field. Every single one of them, if I can. Uh, it should be right here. I should be showing every throw from that soft soft part of the zone. But they didn't figure that out to the second half. And then um, defense got it going, made Trey Lance think a little bit. Um, and that was pretty much the game. That was pretty much the game right there. And then you get the slide in the, uh, the, the what you see on the thumbnail. So really, really good game by Justin Fields. I thought it, I didn't think this game, I didn't think he was going to have anything for the 49ers. I thought it was going to be a blowout. And I thought they were going to baby Trey Lance into it. They didn't, for me, they didn't run the ball as much as I thought they would run the ball. It's, it, it somewhat felt like they were trying to pull a point. You know what I mean? Um, I think going going forward, I think they are running the ball more with Debo and all of them. I think they'll do way more running. But just from what I've seen, they didn't run the ball as much. And if they did run the ball as much, it didn't get as many yards as you would have thought it would have got. So 19-10 Bears. And so I'm gonna go really, really quick past this game because it really was nothing to speak of for real. Absolute light show by my home. So the final score uh, was 44-21, but at one point it was 37 to seven. And you know, it was essentially a blowout. People, they pulled, uh, they probably pulled a lot of the starters and uh, they backed up, they backed up. If they wanted to score 40, if they wanted to score 50, they could have scored 50. 
if Juju would have made a couple more um, catches, if Juju would have made a couple more catches for Mahomes, they would have scored 50, maybe even 55, 60. So uh, Juju didn't have a really good game, but Mahomes did. Light shot. 30 for 39, 360 yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions. Clean, clean game. The now can we're gonna see if he can keep this up against superior opponents because um, the Cardinals are looking real, real shaky right now. So I wouldn't say the Cardinals are headed. The Cardinals are like favorites. I can't remember where I ranked them, but uh, yeah, the Cardinals don't look very good. Kyler Murray didn't look very good. Didn't look very good. Um, 22 for 34, 193 yards. Yes, 193 yards, two touchdowns. All right. It looked all right. It was nothing that I was like, oh, my God, wow, you know. But the game was pretty much out of hand. So, um, it's another another thing, another thing, um, as I'm reading my list. The Cardinals came out flat, and they came out flat, and Kansas City punched them in the mouth. Kansas City got up to 14-0, and essentially that was it. That was rap. That was raps at that point. It was over. So, not much to talk about in that game. Also, not much to talk about in the Ravens game. I don't have the score on my list, but it wasn't nothing to speak of. Um, great light show by I don't, uh, Lamar plays really well in week one. Absolute light show. He's stuck in the pocket. Way more passing. I don't know if they made this an emphasis, but they're moving away from the run all the time. They, they ran it. They don't. J.K. Dobbins is still um, not playing yet, but. Um, they didn't run very much. I don't even, uh, Lamar's six rushes for 17 yards. Like, granted, they were playing the Jets. So we'll see if, if this sustaining. But the way that Lamar was standing in the pocket, flicking that thing, um, Bateman, uh, I think his name is Shard, Mark Andrews, you know, the, in the crew, they looked, they looked really good. The receiving core, the receiving core was really good. Um, I was thoroughly impressed. Um, Lamar was 17 for 30, 213 yards, Three touchdowns and interception. And even on the interception, it looked like he threw it up to his guy and was hoping that his guy would make a play. But they were up by 20 or something that at that point. So um, it really didn't matter that much. But good game. Good game. I'm thoroughly impressed with Lamar. Hopefully they can scale the running back. Um, they can scale their running back and uh, continue to make him a passer. Because if Lamar can even get... I think he's proficient at passing. But if he, he, if he can get... Deadly accurate, which I think Lamar is deadly accurate. It's, it's one of those skills that nobody would talk about. But I think Lamar is deadly accurate. He just don't get a chance to show it a lot because of the offense he in. But I think if he runs more of his college style offense where he just drop back passing and running is a byproduct of that, we might have another MVP on our hands. So we'll, we'll see it when he upgrades the competition. What does it mean for him and all that? So um, we're going to be here for a minute. Cleveland versus feeling dangerous. So I'm gonna tell you, this game was uh, it was a rough first half until the uh, Browns realized that um, Jacoby Brissett is not Deshaun Watson. Um, Jacoby Brissett was 18 for 34, 147 yards and a touchdown. But if you look at the tape, it looks much worse than that. I don't say this a lot about our guys, but Jacoby, you was terrible yesterday. They would have got blown out if, if, if um, I can't remember the head coach of the Browns, but if he didn't pull the reins and say, okay, we're going to give it to Kareem Hunt, we're going to give it to Chubb, they would have got blown out. Kareem Hunt, 22 carries, 141 yards. Uh, Hunt, 11 carries, 46 yards from the touchdown. I, I just, I don't understand why Jacoby was so bad up until the fourth quarter. He was so bad. Like, it, it was just like, oh my, oof, man. Ah, man, it was it was rough. It was rough. And I, and I wrote down um, Cleveland's offense heated up in the second half, but it was the running game. It was that nasty running game. You put a competent, and I'm not saying Jacoby's not a competent quarterback. Maybe it was just a bad day at the office. But you put Deshaun in this, they're going to be dangerous. They're going to be really, really dangerous. I'm looking forward to seeing Deshaun in week 11. And I expect them, I expect Deshaun to look rough. I really do. But Jacoby Brissett's rough and Deshaun's rough, I think it'll be two different things. Deshaun will be almost missed. Probably two calendar years at that point. So it remains to be seen. It remains to be seen. Um, so Miles Garrett, being Miles Garrett, he got two sacks. Um, 
it was it, it got to a point where the defense couldn't stop Baker, which is weird, right? But it makes sense. Baker played against that defense for what damn near three seasons. So it makes sense that Baker would know where the soft spots in the defense was. But as much as you're paying that defense, that needs to not happen. Also, it was a, also it was a lot of breakdowns in the in, in it. The one in the middle, I think he caught one in the middle. They ran to a touchdown, and then one over the top was a breakdown. Um, so they let them back in the game, but it never should have really been that close if they had ran the ball at the start. This is just my perception. This is this is what I see. But um, until the last drive, and um, I, I hate to say, it, but Cleveland should have lost. Because uh, I know Skip was caping for Baker today, but that should have been an intentional grounding that Jacoby did at the end because that was just an awkward move. And that, and I might show it. I might show them back to back what Jameis did and what Jacoby did. One was intentional grounding, and one was not intentional grounding. They essentially did the same thing. One was in the Saints game, and one was in. The Cleveland game. So take that for what it's worth. I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna put them both on the screen side by side. But they should have lost. But they won. So it don't even matter at that point. And so we got Jalen Hurts. We got Jalen Hurts. No, uh, Cleveland won. I think it was 23-24. If I'm not mistaken, 23-24, 27, 24, something like that. Uh, on like a what it looked like 60 yard field goal. So we're gonna get to Hurts. Now, none of what Jalen Hurts did was intentionally bad, but it doesn't look sustainable. So Jalen Hurts was 18 for 32, 243 passing yards, 17 rushes, 90 yards rushing, uh, and a touchdown. And as a team, they rushed for 260 yards. Uh, AJ Brown, 10 receptions, 155 yards. The running game is nasty, right? But here's the thing. They played the Lions, right? Now, the Lions are on hard knocks. I'm sure everybody's like, the Lions are this, the Lions are that. I don't believe in the Lions. I will be very, I will sit here. So, until the, until the Lions prove to me that they're actually like a t contender, I'm not going to take the Lions seriously. Even if they're in all these games and this, this, and the third, I'm, I, I don't care. If you put, put some W's up, right? So, this run and this is the same thing. I this is the same problem that I had with Lamar's team, uh, and I hate to even like be that guy that broaches the subject of like re regular news stations and stuff. But Lamar is developed as a passer. Lamar has developed as a passer. At worst case scenario, we know Lamar can pass. He's won the MVP. He's let the league and pass a touchdown, right? I I I, I don't know. If I see that in Jalen, um, he's a great leader. He's a great leader. He's a great athlete. Um, he he's he he tends to be. He looks. I've, I've watched some stuff with Jalen. There's some interviews I haven't watched yet. Um, he's a great leader, right? Um, and he seems like he's raised right. He's a great person. But I don't know if Jalen is a passer. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not sure if he can be as successful passing the ball as he needs to be. He kind of strikes me as Cam Newton when he first came in the league. And even Cam Newton was a better passer than Jalen is now. Like, unfortunately, there's a reason Tua took his spot at Alabama. Uh, real quick about Tua, because I don't cover Tua. Tua had a great game. Tua got some weapons down in Miami. Um, and uh, the Patriots guy saved Baby Goat is hurt. So we're going to see how the Patriots look. Because the Patriots, they're about to do the Spurs and just fall completely off the map. But I don't know. I'm fearful of Jalen because he plays in a bad division. The Cowboys are terrible now. We're going to get to the Cowboys later. Um, uh, the Giants, Daniel Jones is terrible as well. But Saquon is, I don't know. Saquon can't run that team to the playoffs. Um, and then you have the Eagles. And then you have Carson Wentz, which everybody knows. He's not that guy. He's, Carson Wentz is not that guy. And we all know that. So I don't believe Carson Wentz at all either. So he's the best of a bad division. So he's the best of a bad division, but is he the best of the conference? Is he the best quarterback in a playoff series? Is or the, a playoff uh, round? 
is he the best of a um is he a best of anything when it comes to just if you put him on the field with Dak Prescott is he the best quarterback on the field if you put him on the field with Daniel Jones is he the best quarterback on the field uh, if you put him on the field with I hate to say it Put on field with um, Tom Brady, and I'm using Tom Brady as an example because if you watch yesterday, you realize that he's not what he used to be, and he's looking up. Um, put on field with Jameis as a thrower, you know, um, and that's and I and that's what I'm kind of concerned about as it comes with him. But I think he has enough weapons to where that won't be an issue, and they always want to put grass on the board. That must just be a rite of passage. Because I hear y'all YouTube is complaining about that. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I think he'll be fine. But I, I want to see what he develops as a passer. Now, granted, it's week one, and this is what we do. We overreact to everything. So let's 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 see. They ended up winning 38-31. Um, they should have never been, it should never should have been that close at the beginning. But the defense had some lapses and Detroit is a fighter. So uh, we'll move on to James. Another weird game. Another weird game. So now they played Atlanta, and that that sets this up. Atlanta was. Uh, I'm sure. Let me know. Leave a comment if you've heard this before. Atlanta was up late in the game, and they ended up losing. Atlanta was up late in the game, and they're they ended up losing. They ended up losing. Because they're Atlanta and they can't do things correctly. And Jarvis Landry and Michael Thomas decided to to take over the fourth quarter. And Jameis was dialing it up. Y'all know what's going on in the background. Jameis started to dial it up. Just boom, 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 boom. Now, now his numbers don't look like it. But I'm sure if you took his fourth quarter numbers, they look really, really good. 23 for 34. Twenty-three for thirty-four, sixty-nine yards passing, and a touchdown. Um, they really had no business in, even being in this game at any point. But superstars show up in big-time games, and that's what Michael Thomas did. Uh, you would think that him and James have been playing together for a decade, the way their chemistry looked in that fourth quarter. Um, I don't have much. To, I don't really have much else to really say about this game other than that Atlanta. So we're going I can't wait to see them play the Bucks. And I can't wait to see them play their division. So we're going to see that. Stay tuned to that. I, uh, I hope one of those games is a Thursday night because I want to do an individual game. I want to do an individual um, video about that. And that's the game before I head out of here. Uh, so the Dallas game. I'm not, I don't have the numbers or anything. Um, I don't even want to break down the game because it was 19, it was in 1916. Uh, Brady ended up winning, right? We're going to talk about... Um, and I'll probably cut this into a separate video. We're going to talk about Dak Prescott. Um, so he got hurt. Hand injury hit me out six to eight weeks. Um, I put it should be right here. Um, so he'll be out six to eight weeks. But the sentiment that I'm getting in some of the quote unquote backlash, um, I'm getting is if Dak is, uh, was worth the 40 million, right? And I'm sure I've said this in other videos. If I find it, I'll put it there. But what's he worth the 40 million? No. Was he worth the 40 million to Dallas? Yes. When you're in business, you get the best you get the best deal possible. And people want to Dallas people want to Dak to pick, take a pay cut because of just stuff outside of football. You play for the Dallas Cowboys, and that's what good veterans do, and blah, all this other stuff that does not matter when it comes to his bottom line. And so when Dallas got an agent that could get him the deal that he wanted, people were mad because they're like, you're a quote-unquote leader. Why are you doing this? Because he has to support his family, and he wants generational wealth. You guys sound like overseers. You want him to take a pay cut? Why? 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 Dallas did not have to pay him the money that he wanted. 
Dallas could have let him go and start it over. But he knew Dallas was not going to do that because they already had let Tony Romo go four or five years before that. And he had Dallas and he had Dallas by this is YouTube. He had Dallas in a compromising position to where he was essentially can get whatever he wants. Or you got to franchise me twice or let me go to another team and you you get two first round picks for me. He made a great business decision. That has nothing to do with his on-field stuff. Dallas did not have to pay him over $40 million. They could have let him get to the free agency market. They could have traded him. They could have did all these other things other than pay him his money. So when people be like, he should have took that pay cut. He should have, he should have not did this. And he's not being a leader. He's handling business. They paid Zeke. They paid a coach. They pay. They didn't. Dallas is paying like four coaches. They they paid their running back. They paid D Law. They paid everybody else but the dude who's holding the ship together. And you want the dude who's holding the ship together to take a discount for the team? I'm not doing that. I don't care who I play for. I'm not taking a discount. When because this is be for real. Dak knows his worth. Dak knows his worth. Dak knows what he's worth on the market. So it's not like Dak doesn't know this is going to be his only big contract. And for people to be like, he needs to take a pay cut, that's just disingenuous. Would you take a pay cut? Let's just be for real. And I'm going to leave, and I'm going to leave on, on this note. If you are the best, if you're the only constant in, in your company, let's say you're the only constant in your company, and everybody else around you is getting pay raises, or are you gonna take a pay cut? Are you gonna take a pay cut for the good of the company? Because they think you're you're the best person to take a pay cut because you're the leader. I didn't think so. He wasn't worth the money, but Dallas had to pay him, and I championed for him to get his money because he deserved his money. Because the, you've set a precedent of paying guys already. You set a precedent. So, yeah, that's all I got. I'm sure I have more to say later on. Um, but, um, yeah, so that's all I got for you guys. Uh, the Russell Wilson review will be in a separate video. It'll be, at, the, uh, it'll be on, at one of the tags at the end. And I'll see you guys next week. No, I'll see you guys Friday. Peace.